Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Oasis podcast, Beyond the Pulpit. I am one of the hosts, Rachel Schaefer, and I'm so excited for you to join us. In this first episode, I'd like to introduce you to what you can expect from this podcast. Most of you listening are already familiar with the Oasis Church, whose call is to raise up individuals who will authentically embody the Church of Jesus Christ and passionately evangelize the world. Our vision includes a fervent desire for awakening and reformation in America. This podcast continues the mission you know and love from our ministry, offering fresh content, engaging guest interviews, prophetic insights, and discussions on what God is revealing in our extraordinary times. We are thrilled to move beyond the pulpit and invite you to join us on this exciting journey. You can tune in for new episodes every other week on all Oasis streaming channels, as well as on iTunes and Spotify. I keep saying we because I will be hosting this podcast along with Jen Tringale. Jen is an internationally known author and speaker who regularly ministers at the Oasis. She also used to be on staff here as our youth pastor and our media coordinator. She's a good friend of mine, and I'm so excited to be doing this with her. We have some amazing interviews in the works and are looking forward to candid, heartfelt conversations about what God is doing. I'm so glad you're joining this journey with us and pray that it enriches your life and blesses you. To be honest, I never dreamed of having a podcast or thought I would be doing this, but I have learned that as I grow and mature in my walk with the Lord, He calls things out of me I didn't even know was there. I have learned when he opens a door of opportunity, I'm saying yes every time, because I want to fulfill the purpose and destiny he has created for me. And I think that's important for all of us to remember. We were all created with a purpose and destiny, and if we're truly going to see awakening and reformation in our land, then we all have to be doing what we were created to do. God has written a beautiful, amazing plan for everyone, and he knows how to lead and guide you into the fulfillment of your destiny. As we dive into this Beyond the Pulpit podcast, I will be coming with my perspective as a daughter, a wife, a mom, a worship leader, an author, a speaker. I grew up as a pastor's kid, and I have seen the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, what goes on behind the scenes, so to speak. I've been able to get to know so many different leaders and ministers and have been part of conversations outside of church meetings, and I know these leaders have a true heart after God. We're all in this for his kingdom, for his glory. So we hope you join us as we explore faith, scripture, and real-life issues with honesty, prophetic insight, and a biblical perspective. In this first episode, I want to share a brief background along with some encouragement for you. As you know, I grew up a pastor's kid, otherwise known as a PK. I've loved Jesus my whole life. And while a lot of PKs have reputations for going through rebellious phases, I never did. I went to every church service and event that we had. I volunteered in the church nursery. I was very active in our youth group. I was also on the worship team. When I was younger, all I wanted to do was travel the United States and sing for Jesus. I didn't want to travel the world at the time. I had no desire to leave the country. The states suited me just fine. I remember lamenting to my dad that I didn't have an awesome testimony to share. We used to have guest singers come and minister at our church. And often they would have these amazing testimonies of a great healing, or they had survived a horrible car accident, or received an awesome deliverance. So in my mind, if I was going to travel America and sing, I needed to have gone through something really bad. But I had never survived a horrible accident or been healed of a disease. My dad looked at me after I said this to him, and he said, Rachel, you have the greatest testimony of all. You've always loved and lived for Jesus. And his words inspired me to write a song at the age of 13, which said, my greatest testimony is that I've always loved you and that you have always loved me. 
You've been with me from the start. You know my life. You know my heart. I call you Father, Savior, Friend. You are my greatest testimony. I've never sung that song in public. It's just a song for me to Father God. But I'm so grateful for the upbringing I had. And if you weren't raised in a Christian home and you came to know Christ at a later age, you too have an awesome testimony of being saved, of coming out of darkness and into the light. There's a quote that I have hanging in my home office that says, let your story become your song and sing out for all to hear. While I may not have had what I considered to be an incredible testimony in my younger years, I have now seen the faithfulness and power of God over and over in my life. I have walked through some difficult times now. I do have a story. I have seen God heal not only physically, but emotionally. In the old hymn that says, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, that is truly the song of my heart. We each have a story to tell. You really can't go through life without having a bit of a story. And so as we delve into this new venture with this podcast, my prayer is that encouragement for deep faith, abiding hope, and expectation will rise in you. The heartfelt conversations we will have will explore the intersections of faith, family, work, and everything in between. I hope you will find value in the content the guest interviews, the prophetic insights, and discussions we will have. These are extraordinary times, and we're thrilled to have you join us in this journey. In our next segment, we would like to show you some highlights from the Healing Summit. On Friday, August 30th, we held the very first event, and it was incredibly powerful. Healings were happening all throughout the building and really all across the world. Over 720 churches that we know of, including many in other nations, were participating. We've been receiving testimony after testimony and are so thankful for what God is doing. We truly believe a healing movement has been launched and are so excited to be a part. So as you, uh, uh, as you know, Tim has been overcoming a... a an illness, the, the cancer that he was diagnosed with. And early in that process, uh, five of us, uh, plus him, uh, started praying together every week on the, uh, you know, by phone, a, a, a weekly call, and just to release our faith and pray over him for healing. And it was, uh, uh, it's been a powerful time for us, but quickly within the first, maybe the first night that we did it, we became aware that God was saying something more through those prayer times and through what Tim was walking through than just his healing. We became aware that the Lord wanted to use this for something bigger than that. And a lot of the words that have been given to him over the years and to some of us about healing and gifts of healing, miracles, those words began to surface and come alive and then dreams that had, and visions that had been given to uh, different ones on the call uh, came to us and we felt such weight and wind on them that we knew we were moving into the time for the manifestation, the fulfillment of those things. We talked about it numerous times and we would pray for 30 minutes an hour and then we would talk and different ones were experiencing these insights and revelation. And some of the dreams, you know, that we talked about, I have posted on, on, the, on the 15s this week, the, dream, the, the, the vision, I guess it was, that Ken had about uh, Oral Roberts, the... Um, dream that Tim had about T.L. Osborne and they were all connected to miracles and tapping into the voice of healing movement of the 40s, 50s, 60s. Then there was another dream that the Lord had given to Greg Hood uh, in, in uh, 21, January of 21, 
which we also talked about, and I'm going to relate that one to you tonight. I think it's significant that this is three and a half years ago. It's always good to, even though you get a word or dream from the Lord, process it, pray. What is your time for this, Lord? The Lord might show you something uh, and not plan to do it for a while. And so you, you pray into it, you, you wait, and that's what we did. So in this dream, we found ourselves on the top floor of a high rise, very high. In fact, on the top floor, we were in the clouds. And we look out the window and could see the clouds and, and I and Greg, and who's had the dream and some others here were, were in that boardroom on the top floor. And we believe the interpretation of that, it's clearly Revelation 4.1, the Lord said, come up higher and I'll show you things to come. And we were up on that top floor and most definitely the Lord began to speak in the dream about things to come. It was different ministry leaders uh, from different streams. It wasn't just those that I run with on a regular basis, but other streams were represented. And we were very confident and I know that in this dream, it wasn't just about those of us in the dream. We were representing broad, a, a big portion of the body of Christ. This was about us, us, those of you watching. This was, God was say, speaking to us and we were representing that. We sat down not knowing what was coming on one side of this table about that time, the Lord himself, Jesus walked in the room with four other people from the cloud of witnesses from heaven. And these were significant leaders. I have debated whether or not to give their names. Uh, I don't think I will, uh, uh, except to say they were, three out of four of them were associated with the healing movement of the 50s, 60s. Uh, others, uh, one was a great preacher. Uh, the only one I might mention was the fourth one was uh, our dad, Tim and Tim's and my dad, Dean Sheets. And, so they all were part of that movement of healing and miracles in that day. They sat on the other side of the table with Jesus. Jesus, I found this interesting. He was overseeing everything, but he did most everything that he did in this dream through them. It's fascinating to me that though they were in heaven, they were still working with him. They were part of his team. Instead of doing some things, he'd say, uh, Dean, uh, do this, sir. Gordon, do this. Go ahead and do this now. So as we sat there wondering what was happening, one of them said, well, let's start the transfer and merger. The transfer and merger. Well, we were puzzled. We looked at each other like, what is this all about? So another one, Gordon Lindsay, he was one of them. He spoke up and he led the voice of healing movement, Christ for the Nations, where Tim and I went to school. Greg went to school there. He spoke up and said, well, there's much that has been held back from your generation, but now it's time to release what we have and what is yours to you. Perfect place to clap. That was good. I want to read it again. So one of them said, it's, let's start the transfer and merger. The other one said, there's much that's been held back from your generation, but now it's time to release what we have and what is yours to you. And then he said, it's your inheritance and your assignment. Interesting. It's your inheritance and your assignment. And then they slid two documents across the table to us. Both of them at the top said, kingdom decree, title deed. A kingdom decree had been written and it was a title deed. There were various phrases on these papers, renewed foundation, Ecclesia mandate, 
harvest, signs, wonders, miracles, reaping of worlds or nations. Numerous scriptures were written, and I found this fascinating. Many, many signatures of former saints, leaders, teachers, healing evangelists from the cloud of witnesses were on these documents. They slid this paper across the table to us. We were required to sign it. That was fascinating. Go on record, commit to this contract covenant. They're giving this to you, now sign it. Anybody here willing tonight to sign these, these documents? And say, we'll accept the transfer. I'm ready to sign it tonight, Malone. I'm ready to sign it. And after we signed it, the Lord's, it was marked then, stamped with the Lord himself, signet, his signet ring. When he did, it, the papers were transformed into cloth. As we watched all this on our side of the table, we were deeply moved. We, we knew this, how significant it was. And we looked at one another and said, this is it. This is it. And then we said, this is that. This is that. That's of course what the apostle Peter said on the day of Pentecost. When they were asking him what in the world's going on and he referenced Joel chapter two and prophesied and quoted Joel and he said, this is that. And that's what we said in the dream, this is that. Then the documents began to glow. They, they were lit up, the glory of the Lord, I'm sure. And then they came alive, it was like they were breathing. It's like the, the word of the Lord is alive. The scriptures, the living word, what he was saying, was, life was put into this. And Jesus then said, it's done. The merger, and Trent, now this is, I'm giving you the highlights. There's a lot more details, but we want to get to the prayer. He said, it's done. The merger and transfer is complete. The bowls are full and ready to be poured out. He's going to pour out bowls of signs and wonders, miracles, gifts of the Spirit all over the earth. There's a tidal wave of anointing. It's going to start here and go all across this nation and across the ocean and all the way around planet Earth. All the way around planet Earth. A tidal wave of anointing. And he said, the bulls, the bowls are full and they're ready to be poured out. And then he looked, and I'll tell you the name, he looked at Charles Spurgeon and said, Charles, make decrees over them now. And he began to decree over us. And they anointed us with oil and laid hands on us and power went through us. Keep in mind, please don't forget everything they were doing. We just represented all of us. This generation, those of you joining us, pastors, leaders, those of you that watch this later, this is not about us. This is about us. This is about you. And you, and you, and you. Power, electricity went through us like nothing we had ever experienced. Then Jesus took those documents that were now cloth and glowing and filled with life 
and he breathed on them. And when he did, they transformed into mantles. And he wrapped the mantles around us. And we were mantled with this transfer of anointing from generations before us for signs, wonders, miracles, harvest, billion so harvest, ecclesia mandate. And when he wrapped those mantles around us, He said, the clock has started. Angelic movement has begun. Steward this well. The clock has started, he said. I'm not sure what that means. I know it means it's time. Could be something to do with the hour we live in. But he said, the clock has started. Angels, angelic movement has begun. Steward this well. I just felt the Lord showed me on that airplane riding here. That a host, millions of angels are being released all over the earth tonight, tomorrow, and people just, I know one of the words that Greg released, it was in the post yesterday or today, he said, and I, I just had to question this, I want to make sure it was the Lord, and because, you know, he, he Greg's kind of, <laughs> but he said, you know, I tell you, he said, I heard the Lord say he's more excited about this than we are. I mean, when it's time for this type release from him, you have to, you have to look at the scriptures and say, and, and see how excited he was. How... He loved ministering to the people, transforming and delivering. I think we're there. The, cl the clock has started. Angelic movement has begun. Steward this well. This chair was a chair from the A.A. A. Allen Tent Revivals. And uh, when uh, I was diagnosed with four-stage prostate cancer, I guess it was initially sent to Dutch and he sent it to me. I've sat in this chair and prayed, declaring my healing. Tonight, it's, it's just a chair, we know that. But we're going to reach back in time. And we're going to take hold of a mantle. In the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And we're going to grab hold of that mantle, wrap it around our shoulders, and we're going to carry a healing movement into all the world. This is a believer's movement. These signs follow those who believe. Let's embrace this mantle, guys. Come on. Yes, Lord. Jesus, you orchestrated a supernatural moment. And you called us to sit at a table with heroes of faith. Those that have carried mantles. Those that that they, they saw blind eyes open. They saw the deaf healed. They saw cripples run, incurables healed. And they sat and 
handed the paper to us saying it's time take the mantles in the name of our king in the spirit realm representing the ecclesia not ourselves the ecclesia 726 hosts tonight and believers by the hundreds of thousands probably millions at your word we sign this in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit this ecclesia takes hold of this mantle we thank you for handing it to us lord we will represent it we will represent it in all 50 yes, states. We yes. will represent it in the nations Gosh, of the world. And we declare this night My. the healing movement of Jesus yeah, Christ yeah. will go around oh. the world. Yeah. Oh. We wrap the mantle around the believers tonight. Take hold of it, believers. Take hold of it, believers. Take hold of it, believers. Take hold of it tonight. We launch it. Launch it. Father, tonight, wrapped in the new mantle of this moment, we declare the covenant of King Jesus begin to manifest in homes around those whose family and friends are laying their hands upon them right now. Raise your voice, Ecclesia, and begin to pray. 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 We release wonders to come. We release healing to come to you. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke and destroy by the power of God. Holy Spirit, we declare Lord, in the name of the Lord all over this an infusion of healing and life. Come, Lord. Come into those hospital rooms. Come to those families that are desperate. In the nightmare. In the nightmares. In the nightmares. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those who cannot move. Lord, we pray that strength will begin to infuse in their bodies. We pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We declare in churches overseas even now and in the homes that are represented that the anointing and the power of God would come into those homes now. Holy Spirit, fall on that house as you did on the day of Pentecost. You fell in an upper room, fell in, fall on those rooms, Lord. We declare healings and miracles begin to manifest in every state. Every state, Australia received them. Canada received them. All over the world received them. Thank you for joining us and listening to this podcast. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.